All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more Back to the Future, the game. My name is Raven from the Sky. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your support across the series. Keep showing the love. And I'll keep ranking these out for you guys. And with that being said, let's... Look at them big old cars. Great grandparents drove that bad boy. <laughs> Big old car. man excuse me young man who uh, me you're the only man in the street and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction naturally you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment I read about it yeah what's your opinion of Carl Sagan the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years namely rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor Uh. You can mark me down as a supporter, the young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets, no doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? Yeah, tell them, go ahead, make my day. <laughs> Your day what? Uh... Never mind. I'll play around with it and see if I can come up with something better. Mr. May I get your name? Yeah, it's... Sonny Crockett. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Crockett. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. What? The old lady. She says she was a reporter. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no. Down, boy. Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. Doc. I gotta find Doc. Press. Oh, he can run. Shoe shining. Man, that's old school. That's before my time. That's when your parents were kids, boy. Grandparents were kids, even. All right, let's I see. I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How Doc ever get mixed up in that? Exactly. Not hiring. You gonna buy anything? Um, no. Then get out, Mom. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Gail Zemeckis and Fine, attorneys at law. <laughs> no solicitors. Meaning no selling outside the shop. What is that? Hi, Bob. Name checked. Back to the future creators. Oh wow! No solicitors. <sighs> no selling outside the shop and no trying to sell your products. Well, wow, that's what that is. I don't know if you guys have been to the barber shop and sometimes uh, people come in there trying to sell like you know the barbers clippers and stuff like that. Maybe try to sell you candy. Bank of Italy. Stuff like that. How can I help you, sir? Okay, they can't help. Any money. Us. I don't really have any business in there. True. Okay. Let's 
soup kitchen. Now we can come in here, a restaurant. Yep. McFly. Biff? Kid. Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Is that his Just dad? Thought I'd come down oh, that's his grandpa. Soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? Well, what are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh... Now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Ahem. <clears throat> Okay. Hey, um, uh, never mind. Thought he said garbage. He's probably gonna say something. The kitchen's for management only, rummy. Okay. For we were born only yesterday and know nothing, and our days on Earth are but a shadow. Actually, I won't be born for about 40 years. <laughs> yeah. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. That's true. So how do we... We need a lot of help to get. We can't get... We can't get back there. So what? Key ball. Um. <clears throat> okay. Hey, um, uh, never mind. Nice rack. Uh. Yeah, we got all kinds of. Uh... The culinary enhancements back there. Okay, um... Okay, we can't do anything. Looks like these pipes go into the basement. How do we get down to the basement, though? I think we need to go find Doc first and come back here. You know what's funny? I think I played the demo. You know, Telltale lets you demo the, the games. You can play like the first episode, and after that you have to buy the game. But, um... I think I played this back in Sisters 2010. Sisters of Mercy Soup Kitchen. Come for the but, soup, stay for the salvation. But I can't remember what... What I'm supposed to do. That was so long ago. But I think this was the, the first game for Telltale. I don't... I, I don't know, because I don't know their history before this. Doc! Marty! Doc! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? The automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. 
So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Great Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse! Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Uh. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Um, I feel like they're on the payroll. We are already back in time. How would we? All of these. Okay, let's let's just see what he tell says. Tell the authorities. Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow. Yeah, They'd ship true. us both off to the loony bin. Yeah. Trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. <laughs> Got that right. Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting oh, in a yeah. paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Mm -hmm. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Uh... Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You'll need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely. What? Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why did you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. All right. Let's go give ourselves a call. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. Maybe that's my problem. Lazy hands. Brown residence. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. I see he's calling. The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? <laughs> Why the falls like that? He's tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. To whom may I say is calling, darling? Oh, 
Oh, that's right. You forget we can run. Einstein's at the park. We need to get him out. Oh! Don't touch those! These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm, um, uh, Sonny Crockett. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Right. Where's he going? Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. What? Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. The I am not a scientist. But go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong! Darn it. I do not. Those lawyers sound kind of nasty. Now what? And it won't give you the time of day. Perhaps if you two had some. Damn it! Uh, about Don't your. Don't say it. Party. There. Oh, let's start over. Force equals mass times acceleration of force. That's new. Oh, think, Emmett. Think. H to the a multiplied by the inverse of a. H to the a multiplied by the inverse of a. I. Oh. All right, so we got him recorded. That whole time, all I had to do was just record him. And I had the tape recorder in my inventory. Man. So you get caught up with what's in front of you. You forget what's in your inventory. Didn't even think to check my Doc. inventory. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I Good know. grief. Is that me? I sound so young. I was going to say intense. But I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. What was H again? The Hamiltonian operator. Got it. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. <laughs> Hang in there. The Hamiltonian operator. Let's do it. Will you just give me a chance? 
Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian operator? Yeah. Great Scott! If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A. <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Shoot. Well, it's like this. If you know about my rocket power drill, then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel! I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol! And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. It's part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? I've got a subpoena my grandpa. No! <gasps> Shh! It's Kid Tannen. Aw. Oh. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. Oh. <laughs> and on that note, guys, we're going to stop here. Thank you for joining for this episode of Back to the Future, the game. If you like this episode, do me a favor. Drop a like and subscribe to the channel the series grow. My name is Raven from the Sky. Take care and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.